Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to my walkthrough of the 2020 Sans Holiday Hack. In the previous video, we solved a little warm-up challenge before arriving here at Santa's Castle. It's very busy here as everyone's just arriving for the start of KringleCon, so I'm going to take this opportunity to hide other players to make it a little easier to see. The big man himself is also waiting here to welcome us. The next objective in our badge is to investigate the contents of an S3 bucket. This is only question 2, so it should still be fairly simple, but one of Santa's elves, Shinny Upper Tree, can give us some hints to achieve this in return for helping them with a terminal challenge, so let's do that first. Shinny tells us about the Kringle Kiosk Terminal, which provides some information about the venue and the KringleCon conference, but they're worried that there might be a security flaw in it. The intro to the terminal challenges us to escape the kiosk menu and launch a bash shell. We'll start by taking a look around the different features of each menu option. We have a map of Santa's castle, the code of conduct for the event, a directory of where each of Santa's elves can be found, and a method of printing our name badge. This system has two places to provide user input, the menu system and the name badge printer. And so these are the obvious places to start poking around to try and find this vulnerability. Let's start by dumping a bunch of special characters in to see if we can trigger an error message which might disclose some further useful information. And sure enough, we get a syntax error from bash. So we know that the bash printing system uses bash somehow, and that it's probably vulnerable to command injection. There's a few different ways to abuse this vulnerability, as bash offers multiple options to string multiple commands together. It probably doesn't matter too much which one we choose, so in the first instance, let's try some backticks. And we get our bash prompt, but something is not quite right here. None of the commands are producing any output. Okay, let's get out of this shell and try something different. But what's this in the printed name badge? In amongst the text, we can see the output of the PWD and LS commands we tried running. The other information preceding it is the flag for successfully completing this challenge, but it's not been properly interpreted by the game system, as it's been split across multiple lines in the name badge. So, when I said before it probably doesn't matter too much which option we picked, well, it turns out that in this particular case it does. Those options that we have are double ampherstands. This runs command 1, and if it exits successfully without an error, run command 2. Double pipes will run command 1, and if it exits with an error, then run command 2. The backticks will run command 2, and take its output to use as the command line arguments for running command 1. And finally, the semicolon will run command 1, and then run command 2 regardless of any exit states. So, after some slightly more careful thought this time, the semicolon is going to match our situation the best, so let's try again with that. And success! We get a bash shell again, but this time it comes with a success message and a pop-up to confirm the achievement has been recorded in our badge. Shinny thanks us and provides a few extra hints for the main challenge question. To recap, we need to locate an open S3 bucket which has not been properly protected unwrap the file stored in it, and find the text within. Inside the terminal, we're told that the file is related to Santa's new gift wrapping technology, the Wrapper 3000. We have a folder called Bucket Finder, within which is a script, and the readme file for that script, which tells us that its purpose is to scan for open S3 buckets based on a list of words. We can try running it with the word list that's provided in the terminal, which results in buckets being identified but they have suitable security controls in place to prevent public access. The target for this question is the wrapper 3000, so let's add that to the word list and try again. And success! There is indeed an open bucket of that name. We just need to add the download argument to the bucket finder script, and we now have a copy of the contents, a file called package. Without any file extension, it's not clear what type of file this is but the Linux file command can tell us exactly that. Apparently it's ASCII text, so we should be able to view this directly on screen using the cat command. 
This mix of upper and lower case letters and numbers looks a lot like Base64 encoded data. We can use the Base64 tool with the dash D option to decode this back into binary. This command sends its output directly to screen, but there's two things immediately jumping out. First, there's a file name here. Also, the first two characters of the output are P and K. These two bytes are the magic number associated with a zip file. Let's redirect this output to a file, and use the unzip command to extract the contents. Contained within is a file with a bunch of extensions. These are the layers that we need to unwrap. The first, bz2, is another compression format which can be decompressed with the bunzip2 command. The next layer is tar, a format used to combine multiple files together into one, albeit without compression. We can extract the contents with tar, although there is actually only one other file within. The next layer has the extension .xxd, but this is not really a file format as such. XXD is a tool for printing binary data in human readable format, and we can see that by printing the contents of the file to screen. This is just pure text, with the first column signifying the position of data, the second being the hexadecimal representation of data, and the third being the ASCII representation of the same data. XXD has a command, dash R, to reverse this process and convert this human readable format back into the original binary. We'll again need to redirect the output of this command to a file. The next layer is another compressed file format and can be extracted using the XZ command. Although this is one I've never used before myself, so I'll need to check the relevant command line arguments by specifying the help argument. This suggests that we just need to use the dash D option to extract the contents. The final layer is another compression format, this time the rather unimaginatively named compress format. The contents can be extracted using the uncompress command, not decompress as I incorrectly tried first. The resulting text can be printed to screen using cat, exposing the message, North Pole, the frostiest place on earth. We can now exit the terminal and submit the answer to our badge to complete the second main objective. This seems to be a bit of an odd message to be associated with a gift wrapping machine. No wonder it's not working properly. It looks like we might be starting to uncover the first few clues that Jack Frost is up to no good here at the North Pole. But that's all for this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions, or if you used a different method for solving any of these puzzles. We'll pick up the story in part 3, where we'll be exploring more command line Linux, and reverse engineering an app. Feel free to take a slight detour on your way, and check out some of my other cybersecurity videos, otherwise I'll see you there.